Garrett Viss, 2 o'clock, so let's kick off this conversation. I want to continue this series about living a better life in recovery. Uh, and as some people are chiming in or people are joining this Facebook Live, I just want to thank you for being a part of this community. I want to thank you for being part of these conversations. I'm really trying to grow. I'm inspired to grow this A Life Unchained community to become really the best resource, the number one resource where people that are living in recovery can go and get free resources, free information, free inspiration, free support to help them live a better experience, live a, uh, a better journey in recovery. So for those who have been a part of the conversation, for those who have contributed to the page, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate your support and your help trying to grow this community and uh, grow the service that we can provide to one another. So we started yesterday, we started on Monday talking about uh, this three-part series, Living a Better Life in Recovery. Like, what are the first couple things that we can do? What are, the mo what are those fundamental things that we need to think about, that we need to visit and revisit so that we can live the best version of our life and the best version of our recovery? We started on Monday talking about mindset, talking about creating the right mindset, founding a mindset in gratitude, of course, and finding a mindset in looking at the wins and the strengths that we have, because by looking at our strengths of character, looking at the wins that we've had in the past, looking at the successes that we've had, we can use that as a, as a context. We're looking at our present challenges and looking at the future and coming up with ways that we can get to where we want to be in the future. When we just look at the failures and we just look at our setbacks, that creates a stress mindset and it's too hard to use that to move forward. It's too hard to use that limited thinking or that survival thinking to creatively come up with solutions and help us move forward. Today, I want to talk about the void. So it's been said, I, I certainly believe this, a lot of the stuff that I've read, a lot of the conversations that I've had, it's really a consensus that all addictions start in pain. There's some pain that somebody is trying to avoid or escape or numb or get away from. And you look at the different people, or you look at uh, different populations of people, some that are exposed to addictive substances or behaviors, the one thing that the people have in common that become addicted or they were in a position of or they're in a situation where they had pain in their life. Either they didn't have the coping mechanisms to deal with the pain at the time that they were exposed to or the pain was so severe that the it kind of opened up that uh, that pathway for dealing with the, the pain, the emotional pain, the physical pain, which was or which manifests as addiction. Now, pain can be that catalyst for the addiction, but it shows up different ways for everybody. There's a lot of different basic needs that we have. And when these needs aren't met, that creates that pain. When there's a void there, a void of some need that's not being met or a void of you know, that, that need that need that's not being met might be the physical need because you're in physical pain or it could be emotional pain because you don't have the connection. You don't have the security. Look at the, the basic human needs that we have and something there is not being met or not fully satisfied. And that creates a void. And because of that void, it fuels that pain, that pain manifest uh, as a result. And that pain is what opens the door for and furthers that propensity towards addictive substances and behaviors. So one very critical thing to do as we find ourselves in recovery is identifying what those sources of pain were, identifying really what that void was. I remember uh, before I started doing the work and before my journey in recovery began, I knew that there was a tremendous amount of pain inside. I knew that there was some void, but I didn't understand it. But it was because I couldn't understand it, because I didn't know where that pain was coming from, that emotional pain, that lack of fulfillment, that lack of purpose, whatever it was, that was creating that pain for me because I didn't know where it was coming from. It just kept me confused and scared. And that's the biggest reason that prevented me from finding recovery because I was afraid to give up this thing that I was holding on to so tightly because I knew it helped me deal with that pain. Well, once we've navigated that path, once we've found it our, and started our journey in recovery, if we don't go back and identify and really get clear on what are some of those sources of pain, what is that lingering void and take steps to fill that void, then our journey in recovery is only going to be a game of survival. It's only going to be suffering against that void and trying to overpower the propensity to go back and deal with that pain uh, and deal with that void. So if we, we need to focus our attention in recovery, and it's a constant process. You do it initially and deal with some of the, some of the traumas or some of the lacks of connection that you have or some of the emotional pain, the emotional scars that you have, do it initially, but it's a process that we need to keep coming back to for as long as you have cravings, for as long as you have desires to go back to your old way in, in any form. Of course, we don't wanna go back to the lifestyles that we used to have. We don't wanna go back to making decisions that we used to, but as long as there is 
even a hint of that craving or a hint of that desire for that easier way, for that relief of that pain, this is an indication that there's still some work to do, that there's still a void that can be addressed, that there's still some basic needs that aren't being met that we can go back and we can address. So identifying where that missing piece is and and then trying to fill that void is the best thing that we can do for our long-term recovery and for really living that happier, that more fulfilling, that more joy-filled life that we want and that we deserve in recovery. So many different ways a void can come about. Um, it can be a lack of connection. Maybe you have a lack of connection, a lack of bonding to other people. Maybe you have a lack of connection to meaningful work. Maybe you have a lack of connection to yourself. There could be uh, an inauthenticity in yourself where you know that you're not putting forward and you're not... The, the version of yourself that's showing up, the way that you're showing up, the values that you're living into, the beliefs that you're living into, they're just not congruent with who you're, you are truly, with who your natural self is. And a lot of times that creates a huge sense of void or a huge sense of pain because we're deviating from our authentic self. And the more that we do that, the more it fuels that personal judgment, the more it fuels that shame, the more it fills that or it creates a larger void that must be filled with those uh, substances or behaviors. Many people, they have a void that's created that stems from trauma that they've experienced in their life. It could be a developmental trauma, just meaning that you, you, didn't, uh, you didn't have those loving, nurturing bonds or those connections that you needed to develop the proper coping mechanisms and the skills to navigate the future challenges in life. For other people, it's an experience that they had. It was uh, experiential trauma. So there was a traumatic experience or a series of experiences in their lives that were very traumatic. And because of that, they withhold from being their natural self. They, they, um, they, it changes their beliefs. So the traumatic experience is defined as something that changes our fundamental beliefs about something. If we have a post-traumatic stress or post-traumatic growth, it's because there's a core belief or a core value or a core assumption about the world or about who we are that has changed. So if you have experienced a traumatic experience and it has changed your belief that the world is a safe place, that you know the connections that I have are safe and nurturing, there's people that I can trust. If you have a traumatic event and it challenges that, well then that creates a void between the need that you have to feel safe and loved and protected and secure as you are and the reality that you're experiencing. So when you find yourself in recovery, uh, reconciling that, identifying where that void is and doing some work to reconcile that, that can be what you can do for your best recovery. So for every person, it shows up differently. This void shows up differently and it could show up in different areas of your life. Uh, but it's important to understand where it's coming up in your life so that you can do the work and you can fill that void so that you can relieve that pressure. You can relieve those cravings. You can relieve those desires to reach for those uh, those external stimulus, those external coping mechanisms that became our addictions in the past. So one way to do this is to look at different areas of your life. Look at the work that you're doing. Look at the contribution that you're making. Look at the relationships that you have, your physical health, your financial health. Look at different areas of your life and see where are you not on track? Where might you be able to do some work that will improve other areas of your life? A lot of times we focus and we'll double our efforts down on those areas of our life that we're succeeding. This is something I certainly did when I was in the Marine Corps. I was, I was having a lot of success in the Marine Corps and my career was going well, so I would double my efforts down in the Marine Corps because I was getting good return. I was, um, I was being recognized. I was being valued. I was, my efforts were being validated. So I would put more time and energy and focus in those areas while neglecting some other areas of my life. But it was those other areas of my life, whether it was my physical health, my financial health, my other relationships, it was those areas of my life that were creating that void that I was escaping from. So if we can look at those places that we're not thriving, those places that we might be lacking that sense of security that we need, whether it's physical, financial health, whatever, or, or your relationships, come back and address those areas. Because when we can, uh, when we can deal with those needs that aren't being met, it will help us thrive more in those other areas of our life. Another thing you can do is just look at some of the basic human needs that we have. Look at, you know, our basic needs for security, for survival, you know, the financial security, uh, connection to our tribe, close friends that we have that we can rely on, that we can share our burdens with, that we can seek advice from. And if there's any areas of your life, any basic human needs that you have that aren't being met, that can be an area that you can do some work. But when we can draw our attention back to and continue to do this work, uh, I feel like the places that we are least successful or the places that we are least thriving is really setting the bar for those other areas of our life. So there's one area that we're really neglecting and there's an enormous void and a huge sense of pain or a huge sense of insecurity coming from that area. 
it's going to affect how well we can do in the other areas. It sets a cap or it sets a bar for how well we can do in those other areas. So instead of doubling down, instead of pouring more energy in, uh, in, in those areas that we're succeeding, trying to raise the bar, if we instead we look at those areas that we have that void, that we have something that's stealing our energy and, and occupying our subconscious, keeping us up at night, uh, and we can fill in those holes and fill in that void, then every area of our life will rise and we can experience that better life in recovery, that greater happiness, that greater fulfillment, the greater connection. So I, that's what I want you to do today and tomorrow is think about some of those areas in your life that you aren't thriving. Think of some of the challenges that you're facing and how, what can you do to address that? Um, of course, we spend a lot of time focusing on where our wins are, but now let's look at where uh, we can make some positive changes, where we can clean some things up, where we have some of that insecurity, where we have that sense of void, and then we can come up with a plan for curing that or solving that or making some progress in those areas of our life so that our whole life and our holistically we can experience a much greater life and a much greater recovery. I'd love to learn what some of your challenges have been. One of the great things about this community is we can use the challenges that we're facing and we can connect with other people. Maybe they face those challenges. Maybe they have a resource. Maybe they have a technique, a tool, some, uh, some aha that they had that helped them navigate that. And we can leverage the wisdom, the collective wisdom of other people to help us navigate these challenges in our lives. So think about some of those areas. And if there's something that you need help with, please post it in this group. You can reach out to me send me a message uh, directly. I'd love to share any resource that I might have that might help you uh, in that situation. So step one, we got the right mindset. We look at the strengths that we have, and we're going to bring that into this, into this uh, step two by identifying those, those gaps, those voids, because we can use the strengths that we have. We can remember some of those wins that we've had. We can distill what some of our strengths were, some of the resources that we used to help create those wins in our past, and we can learn ways to leverage those same strengths or those same resources to clean up some of those places that we're struggling uh, now in our life. And that's what we'll look at on Friday, 2 p.m., another Facebook Live, continuing this conversation, three-part series, how to live a better life in recovery. Thanks for watching this video. I look forward to your comments, and have a great day.